so if you're on your back, you can just have another few cycles of breath. Breath, a few cycles of breath on <laughs> I'm get into that on your backs. And we're actually going to start in sitting. So when you feel ready, hi Francis. We're starting in sitting. So hopefully not too much of a shock. And Danny, are you okay temperature wise? Yeah, good. Okay. So in sitting. Um, I hope the sound's okay. I've got my AirPod in. Um, I will try and speak up. So yeah, in sitting, you're going to be sitting with your legs long, leaning back on your hands and just giving your legs a little bit of a roll. So what I do is that we're gonna do, we're gonna do a few sitting things and then we're going to do a little bit of sitting and breathing, not for long, and then we'll carry on moving again. The other thing you can do while you're sitting here with your legs long is to do a little bit of pointing your heels and pointing your toes. And Jan, just go easy in that leg. So point the heels. Well, that's pointing the toes, point the heels. Good. And just move between those two, pointing your heels, pointing your toes a few times. Okay. And then what you're going to do from here is keep leaning onto your left arm and hand and fold your right knee into your chest and bring your right arm around the back of your right thigh. That's it. So you can then exactly circle that right ankle. You're supporting your right, sort of around the back of your right knee and you're circling your ankle, good. And if it's anything like mine, it's going to be all sort of clicky and clunky. See how it goes. And then, what we're going to do from here is we're going to swap our arms over. So you're going to bring your left hand to catch the outside edge of your right foot. And you're going to lean back now onto your right arm and hand. And then just start to swing your leg from side to side. This doesn't have to be a huge movement. It's good if it can be comfortable, easy. That's it. So we're just right, uh, right foot in the left hand, swinging the leg from side to side. Good. And then from here, you're just going to let that leg come down and come into sort of like a half cobbler pose. So let your knee fall out to the side and lean back onto both hands. So your knee's falling out to the side. Now, it might be in this one. You could, you know, so sort of a Janu Shashasana, sh 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 I can never say it, movement. So for some of you, you might feel that you'd like to see what it's like to fold forwards here, you know, just sort of go easy. Fold forwards here, maybe reach towards your foot or your ankle, but you don't have to, yeah? And Lynn, that might be sort of forward bendy, might not be so great, possibly on one side. Okay, and yes, and then from here, you're going to lengthen that leg out, that bent leg out, and swap sides. So now fold your left knee into your chest. Hi, May. We're just doing some sitting to start with, hello. Um, so hold it around the back of your thigh, so you left, knee folds to the chest, left arm supporting it, and circling your left ankle. So just a bit of circling the left ankle, almost perhaps click, that's it, clicky clunky movement, circling the left ankle. Good. And then like we did on the other side, you're going to swap your arms over. So you're going to take your right hand and catch the outer edge of that left foot, and now lean onto your left arm and swing your legs from side to side. It's far too many lefts and rights at this point in the day. So just see if you can find an easy, that's nice, an easy movement, swinging the leg, a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, good. That's it. And then again, like we did on the other side, just let this leg come down in a sort of half cobbler pose and lean back on your hands. And again, if you want to fold forwards into your Janu Shashasana forward bend, you can do briefly. Um, or it might just be at this point in the day, you want to keep leaning back onto your arms. Keep that long leg nice and loose. And from here, we're, well, I think probably we'll lengthen both legs out for a moment and then we'll come into cobbler pose and just see how that feels. So you could lengthen both legs out, give them a little bit of a roll. So May, as you just joined a bit later, we're, um, 
we're doing some sitting things and then we're going to do a bit of sitting breathing and then we're going to move a bit more that's the plan so come into cobbler pose and just see how your cobbler pose feels again you could be leaning back onto your arms or you could be holding your feet or your ankles if you like you could do a bit of rocking so rocking is one option there's lots of options here a bit of I don't know, I tend to do a little bit of circling quite often. A little bit of circling, and that's sort of, if you're circling, that takes you into quite an easy forward bend. Yeah, or maybe a hint of a forward bend. Good. And we won't stay here too long. So maybe from here, again, you might want to just lean back on your arms, lengthen your legs out again, give them a roll. And then you're going to bend your knees and have quite a distance between your feet. So you're leaning back on your arms. Yeah, if, you've, if you're sitting facing the long, the length of your mat, have your feet as wide apart as your mat. And then you're going to get let your knees tilt from side to side. Good, so to the right and to the left. And see if that knee that's coming to the center can come all the way down to the ground. Good. And it could be that you can, if your knee comes to the ground, you could just tap it on the ground in the center a couple of times. And you could try that going the other way, tap that knee on the ground, don't have to. And then just a few more times from side to side. And eventually, yeah, you, you might end up sort of walking, <laughs> I don't know whether you walk forwards or backwards on your mat, but eventually from this, you're going to come into pinwheels. So let your knees come down on one side and stay there. And just come to a little bit of circling. And thought we could do the one where you give yourself a hug. So crossing your arms, letting your head hang a bit, spinning wide across your upper back and just that's it, circling. And seeing how this feels. So when we're, that's it, we're working on the hips and the shoulders here. And hopefully finding a sort of nice, I don't know, soothing, relaxing movement. So looking down helps you feel wide across your upper back. And then whenever you like, if you're quite, if this, if this is quite good for you, then you could stay with this. But whenever you like, you're going to release your arm, turn towards the knee that's going out to the side and come into a forward bend. So settling down over that bent leg. And so it's a little chance to sort of settle and quieten and breathe. To feel the breath come in, feel the breath leave you. And certainly because we've started off moving today, um, it's good then just to have a little moment of, of being quiet for another couple of cycles of breath. And when you're ready, you can walk your hands back in towards you. That's it. You can just rock. You might need to come back to the centre. I let you just come back. Maybe come back and just do a little bit of rocking from side to side, I think, with your feet wide again. And then we'll go into the second side of pinwheel. Good. So over onto side to, and again, once you come onto side two, it might just do these little adjustments of your feet to make it as comfortable as possible. Again, giving yourself a hug. If you can remember which arm you had on top last time, then swap, it doesn't matter too much. Let your head hang forward and do a little bit of circling, just trying to find some sort of movement that feels good to you right now. And if we're thinking about the shoulders, it's this space across the back of the shoulders, this width. If the head is hanging forwards a bit, the back of the neck can lengthen out. I always tend to then want to close my eyes. So you can stay with a bit of circling. And when you're ready, you can come into your forward bend by releasing your arms, turning towards the knee that's turned out to the side, folding down over that leg. And again, Make, give, use this opportunity to sort of quiet and to settle, to feel the movement of your breath. 
So feel the breath come in, feel the breath leave. Let the weight of your body settle on the ground. So perhaps another cycle or two of breath here. You can carry on for another couple of breaths if you like in your pinwheel, but from here, what we're going to do is come onto hands and knees. We're gonna move through dog pose and into a forward bend and then down through a squat and back onto hands and knees. And then from there, we'll do a little bit of sitting and breathing. But let's for the moment, just focus on our dog. So from hands and knees, nice big handprints on the floor. You can tuck your toes under, you can exhale. You just find your way into dog pose and yeah see how it feels. So it might be that we're feeling a little bit creaky in this first dog pose, or I was, you know, it might be surprisingly enjoyable. So yeah, any of those little adjustments, there's little movements we can do in dog, bending one knee, bending both knees, releasing the head. Good. That's it, having a few breaths there. So if you're happy in dog, have another few breaths. From this dog, we're going to be walking our hands into a forward bend. So um, Lynn, just take it easy. If you prefer to go back onto hands and knees from dog rather than the forward bend, you could do, okay? So just that might be, yeah. And you could then just do a bit of cat on hands and knees rather than the forward bend. So everyone else walking your hands in towards your feet, coming into a forward bend. Again here, if your lower back feels a bit tight. You could bend your knees. You could rest your elbows on your thighs. Let your head go. If it's comfortable to release your arms to the floor, release your arms. We have a couple of breaths here. Feeling the weight rooting down through your heels. And then from your forward bend, we're going to bend the knees. That's it, then you can do your squats from there, very nice. You're gonna to start to bend your knees. So you're coming down into a squat and it's fine if your heels come up. That's it, good. You're coming, that's it, Sarah, down onto the balls of your feet, Sarah from Bristol. And um, from your squat, you're going to roll forwards onto your hands and knees. And then from here, you're gonna lengthen each leg out behind you. And we're then just going to think about how we could sit to do, we're not going to do that much breathing, just for sort of a couple of minutes, two, three minutes. So you could, if you're comfortable in kneeling, you could sit in kneeling. Jan, you might just want to sit. Yeah, so I was going to say kneeling. You can kneel in the room. You could put your back against the wall and sit with your legs long, if that's better, or cross your legs. So just, yeah, however you can be comfortable for two or three minutes, just focusing in on your breath. And there's no right or wrong, well, there is a right or wrong way to sit. This is the comfortable way. It's the, yeah, what's most comfortable is the way to sit. So just let yourself settle. If you're sitting in kneeling, you might just want to do a little bit of setting your pelvis tilt forwards and back, rolling your pelvis a little bit like sort of cat movements and kneeling. If you're sitting cross-legged, you might just want to do a little bit of swaying or circling. And then what I thought we were going to use today is just a little, just some words from Thich Nhat Hanh that help us connect with our breathing. And they're very simple. And we're going to start with a very simple one. We'll add some others in as we go by. So in your sitting, if you settle down and just Connect with your breathing. So feel the breath, breath flowing in, the breath flowing out. And then all we're going to do as we breathe in, we can silently repeat these words, breathing in, I know I am breathing in. And then as you breathe out, breathing out, I know I am breathing out. So breathing in, as you breathe in, I know I am breathing in. And breathing out, 
breathing out, I know I am breathing out. So you could repeat all of those words, or you could just very simply as you breathe in, say into yourself and feel the in-breath coming in. And as you exhale, you could just very simply say out to yourself and feel the breath leaving you. So we'll just do this for maybe four or five more cycles of breath. And then at the end of that, I'll ring the singing bowl once, and then we'll, we'll start to move again. So in and out, four or five cycles of breath. So dog pose, forward bend, um, down through a squat. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just checking the sound is working properly. So hopefully, yeah, I'll double. Okay, yeah, so in your own time, dog pose, again and then, then maybe just coming down onto hands and knees for some some cats but the rest of you if you would say dog pose forward bend down through a squat again so exactly what we did coming back to these movements seeing how this second dog pose feels staying in dog pose as long as you like if it feels enjoyable Stay there, enjoy it. From dog pose, when you're ready, walking your hands into your feet, arriving in a forward bend. If you feel in this forward bend that you'd like some movement, so you're in a forward bend, if you'd like some movement, sweep. you can sweep your arms around the front of your legs. Yes, Sarah, if you've come down in your squat, you can go onto hands and knees. Yes, so if you come down through your squat, you can go on to hands and knees and then come into some cat movements. Okay, so come to, that's it. Come to rounding your back to the ceiling, dipping your spine down to the floor. So some cat movements and also some tail wagging movements if you like as well. So imagine you have a tail and wagging your tail from side to side. Yeah, so a bit of tail wagging, a little bit of cat. And then in a moment, we're going to come up into standing. But before that, what I'd like you to do is to round your back in cat and then rock your hips back over your heels and come into child and just come to a few quiet breaths in child pose, letting yourself settle and rest. And if you prefer kneeling to child, that's absolutely fine. Just letting yourself settle down in child pose. Forehead settling on the ground, elbows settling on the ground. Very relaxing Mel there with the dogs. <laughs> Having a bit of a wrestle. Um, yeah. So perhaps just another three or four cycles of breath in child pose. See if you can let yourself sink into it. Sink and soften into child.
And in your own time, one last time, we're going to come through dog pose and a forward bend. And this time from your forward bend, you're going to roll into standing. So Lynn, you might want to do a dog pose and then just come into standing however's comfortable for you. Okay, yeah. And again, those of you who, yeah, well, you're all doing dog, aren't you? So give yourself some time in this dog pose, particularly if it's starting to feel that things are undoing. So, you know, maybe dog pose is feeling now a place where you can sort of breathe, you can settle, you can be. And yeah, good, yeah, good idea, Lynn. And from your dog pose, whenever you're ready, no rush, walking your hands into your feet, coming into your forward bend, you can have a few breaths in your forward bend. Feeling your heels rooting into the ground and then rolling up into standing, that's it, or walking your hands up the fronts of your legs. That's nice, Sarah, good. And arriving up in standing. Great. Lovely. So in standing, we're going to start with this sort of loose, easy swinging twist. So feeling that's it, feeling the whole of ourselves in movement. Good. Very nice. So letting your pelvis move, letting your feet move, letting the arms swing, they can slap onto your body if you like. If you feel a bit like me, you might need a bit more waking up today. <laughs> so it seems to be like every day at the moment, if it's very dark, this morning. Good. Okay, so just a few more times until you start to perhaps feel a little bit more awake, a little bit more alert, a little bit more alive. Oh, that might take you longer, I don't know. And then we're just gonna settle briefly and come back to that focus on our breathing. So you're gonna settle in standing with your feet a little distance apart. And I tend to like to bring one hand to my belly and one hand to my chest, but it could be both hands on your belly or could be hands on your low rib. But yeah, so possibly one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. Closing your eyes, if it's, yeah, if you like to sway a little bit from side to side. So you could sway and then use that swaying to help you settle. So from swaying, you're settling down. And closing your eyes, if that's comfortable, and just coming back to that breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. How does it feel to connect with the breathing in this way? Now we're standing. And maybe just for two more cycles of breath, in and out, feeling the movement of your breath in your body. Good, and then from here, we're going to come, Lynn, you may not do this, we're going, to, we're going to come forwards into a forward bend. So just going to let yourself either elbows on your thighs or releasing forwards into a forward bend, feeling rooted through your heels. Lynn, if you're not going to, exactly, yes, if you're not going to do that, do some wiggling of your pelvis, definitely. Exactly what I was thinking. So those of you who've gone into a forward bend, yes, this is very nice. <laughs> Um, those of you who've gone into a forward bend, have a few breaths there and then rolling back up into standing. Good. And when you arrive in standing, maybe give your legs a little shake out or you can join me and Lynn for your pelvis sort of wiggle from side to side. Yeah, but a good a little shake out of each foot because we're going to focus in on the feet now. And what we're going to start to do with our feet a little distance apart is this one where we bring the, our weight onto the balls of the feet and bring our heels off the ground. That's it. And just go in and out a few times. So lifting the heels, weight coming into the balls of the feet, 
keeping the arms nice and, and hands relaxed. Yeah, the hands will probably want to start getting involved. Let's try and keep them quiet. So a couple more times, shifting your weight onto the balls of the feet, the heels come up. You try to feel steady and wide across the fronts of the feet. And the next time we'll stay there. So coming forward and then floating your arms up. And let your shoulders stay down, away from your ears, good. And just have a few cycles of breath here. So we're balancing on the balls of our feet, our shoulders are soft. We're feeling the flow of the breath through our body. Good. And when we come down from here, as you let the heels come down, let your arms sweep around and come down into your forward bend. And this time you could do sort of that sweeping movement of arms sweeping around the fronts of the feet, that sort of weeping willow movement. Very nice, Lynn. Yes, you could just rest with your elbows on your thighs. We're not doing too many more forward bends. Well, a few more. Good. That's it. Very nice. And you can pause in the center, you can sink into your heels and roll up into standing. And when you arrive back in standing, we're just one at a time, you're gonna come onto the top of your foot. So sort of slide your foot back behind you, flip onto the top of your toes. And you can try, try straightening your knee. I'm holding onto the shelf here because if it makes you feel wobbly, there's a little bit of balance. Um, you can try straightening your knee as you do that, but it, for me, it makes my foot a bit crampy. And then do the same thing on the other side. And we'll do this twice actually on each side. So just the sliding the foot back. So we're stretching through the front of the ankle, maybe straightening the knee, sort of a little mini balance because we're not really bearing much weight on the foot that's gone back behind us. So yes, do use your fingers on the wall if you feel unsteady. So do that, do that twice on each side. Okay, and then maybe just give the feet a shake out. And we're gonna come now to, I suppose, a, a sort of a little sequence of movement that where we're gonna be starting with our feet side by side, and we're gonna be stepping forwards on the mat with one foot. So you just need to have enough space in front of you that you can step one foot forwards. And then just come to this, <laughs> I was just thinking of this big ah oh, feeling. So I always get this big sort of feeling of settling and well-being when I'm just here rocking my weight into the front foot and the back foot. So it is a little bit like walking, walking meditation. Maybe those similar feelings we get when we're, we're walking. And eventually from here, eventually from rocking forwards and back, we will settle down and just look at your feet. So at this point, I'd like you to make sure both feet are pointing forwards. So your feet are pointing forwards, your pelvis is pointing forwards. You could bring your hands onto your pelvis. Um, because then what we're going to do is we're going to swing our arms, but try not to let the pelvis move. So it's this rather slightly artificial movement, yeah, where the pelvis and legs are not moving. And we're turning the ribs and the shoulders and the head. So to your best ability, that's it. Try not to move your pelvis. Good. And then pause in the center and bring your hands to prayer pose at your chest. So you're facing forward. But what we're going to do is turn towards the front leg. So just stay where you are, but I'm going to put my legs over. So from here, keeping your hands at your breastbone, start to turn towards your front leg. So again, it's the ribs, the shoulders, the head that's turning towards that front leg. But the pelvis, hopefully not. Good. And when you've turned as far as you can, which might not be very far, try and just feel where your shoulders are. Because then as you exhale, you're going to bring your arms out in line with your shoulders. Good. That's it. Let the shoulders drop down away from the ears. That's nice. Lovely. Have a breath or two here. And then from here, you're going to release your arms. You're going to untwist. And Lynn, just see, you might not want to do this bit. We're going to come, we're going to bend the front knee. You might do the first bit. You're going to bend the front knee and fold forward. So you're resting your 
hand or your forearm on that front bent front thigh. And Lynn, that's probably enough for you, but the rest of you could then go further where you're releasing down to the ground. So your chest comes close to that bent front thigh. So you're coming into a forward bend with one foot stepped forward, either resting on that bent front leg thigh or resting, or resting your arms or your chest on that leg. And have a couple of breaths. Let your head go. And just have a couple of breaths there. And when you're ready to come out, Sink into your heels, roll back up into standing. Good. And then just have a little bit of shake out. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So you're going to step, come back to our starting point, feet a little distance apart, and then stepping the other foot forward. And just this. I don't know it may not be this you may not like it as much as me but just this what well, <laughs> i always feel this is quite soothing this rocking our weight into our front foot rocking our weight into the back foot just forwards and back making sure as you're doing this you've still got that little bit of sideways distance yeah you don't want to feel that like you're standing on a tightrope with your feet or you're not going to feel very um, calm and soothed Yes, I mean, exactly. And Jan was saying not too much of a big step because that makes it not so calming. Yes, a little a smaller step. And then settle down. So both feet are pointing forwards. You can bring your hands onto your pelvis for a moment and then leave the pelvis there as you swing your arms. So just like we did on the other, other side, we're trying to turn from the waist up. So ribs, arms, shoulders, head but not the pelvis, not the leg. And then we can slow it down and we're gonna to turn towards the front leg. So with the hands in prayer pose. So again, we're trying to leave below the waist, we're trying to leave all of that facing forward. And then as the breath, as you exhale, maybe each time you exhale, you turn a little bit more towards your front leg. So the ribs, the shoulders, the head, I mean, you can't always go very far, which is fine. Have, just try and sense where your shoulders are. And as you exhale, then bring your arms out in line with your shoulders. Drop the shoulders down away from your ears. Good. Oh, very nice. Lovely. Wonderful. Just a breath or two here. And then you can untwist. And you can come into the forward bend. So bending your front knee, your back leg stays straight. Then you just do that first part where the hands or the forearm are leaning on the front thigh. And then the rest of you, if you want to go lower, you can release your head and your arms to the floor and your chest comes close to your thigh. And give yourself a couple of breaths there. That's it. Then you can come out and you can just come back to your pelvis wiggling. <laughs> you're shaking. Good. Yeah. So in your, if from your forward bend, when you're ready to come up, come up and just come back, feet side by side, have a little shake out of the pelvis, shake out of the legs and arms. And we're going to come back into that same position of stepping one foot forward. But this time we're going to come into a balance. So come back to your first, well, first foot. Come back, if you like, to a little bit of shifting your weight forward and back. So from here, you're going to settle both feet down eventually, and you're going to bend your front knee. So we're going to be bringing our weight completely onto our front foot in a moment. If you bring your hands into prayer pose, and this is a balance that we've done quite a lot. So from here, with the hands in prayer pose, and they're going to stay there. We're going to bring our weight into our front foot and that front knee stays bent for the moment. We lift the back foot off the ground and that knee's bent as well. So we're in this sort of funny exaggerated runner position. And then you're starting to reach your back heel back behind you and letting your body tip forwards in response. And your standing knee now starts to straighten, but not lock. So... We're trying to feel long, sort of reaching into our back heel, from the back heel to the crown of our head. Good. Very nice. And that's it. Good. Wonderful. Yes. 
You can manage a couple of breaths there. That's really fantastic. And yes, we're well done. And when you feel that you've had enough, Good, you can come up. And always with these ones, like some of you've actually all managed to balance for really quite um, impressive lengths of time. But if you come into this, but we'll do the other side. But if you come into these and you instantly fall out and you want to do it a second time, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to take my eyes off you, Jan, to <laughs> put, put you off. So step your other foot forward and come back to that, just that rocking forwards and back a few times. And then from this rocking forwards and back, we just settle down. And at this point, again, both feet are pointing forwards. The pelvis is pointing forwards. We're bending the front knee and bringing the hands into prayer pose at the breastbone. And the hands, I have my hands touching my breastbone. I think it, I just find it really helpful in lots of levels. And then from here, we're bringing the weight. The front knee's bent. We're coming to balance on that bent front knee. Lift the back foot off the ground. Both knees are bent this funny sort of runner position, and then start to reach back behind you with that raised heel, straightening that back leg, letting your body tip forwards in response to that back leg lengthening, and the standing knee can start to straighten, but not lock, and then see if you can have a few breaths, feeling long from the crown of your head to your heel. Wonderful. And like I said on the other side, if you fall out of it and you want to go into it, often, you know, one side can be very nice down. <laughs> one side can often be easier than the other. Good. When you come out of that one, yes, a bit of pelvis wiggling or possibly I think a forward bend, maybe not for you, Lynn, but just in, come into a quiet forward bend. We've got one more balance we're going to do in a moment. A quiet forward bend, even going down into a squat if you feel drawn to doing a squat. Yeah, Lynn, just lots of wiggling. Good. And then thinking, yes, if you've gone down into a squat, then reverse the movement. So from your squat, start to send your heels down and your sit bones up. So you come back into a forward bend. And then from your forward bend, roll up into standing. And give your legs a little shake out. So we're going to come now to the balance that we've been working with a little bit over the last few weeks. And I'm hoping that sort of repetition is helpful. Um, familiarity. So with one more time, one last time, you're coming to this position where you step one foot forward. And you can do a little bit of rocking forwards and back. Okay. And then from here, you're going to settle your feet down and just have a look at your feet because both feet are pointing forwards. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to start to turn our pelvis, swing our arms and turn towards the back leg. And as I do this, I actually, if I'm letting my pelvis turn towards my back leg, I want to let my back foot turn out a bit. Yeah, because the back knee is more comfortable that way. So see what you want to do. So we're turning towards the back leg. We're letting the pelvis turn. The front foot staying pointing forwards, but we might want to let the back foot turn out of it. And we're bending the front knee and we're bringing the arms up to shoulder height and just feeling really wide across the front of the chest. So you probably all know where we're going to now because we've done this one quite a lot. So from here, we're moving into our half moon pose. We've already got this big openness across the front of our body. So all we have to do is start to shift our weight into our front foot and start to tip forward. But yeah, it may be more wobbly than that. So we might try a couple of times. So we might you know, see where we go to. We might find that our middle finger could touch the ground. That's quite nice. Does depend a bit if you've got long legs, <laughs> your fingers may not go nowhere near the ground. Nice. It's, yeah, I think it's sometimes one that's sometimes nice to try a couple of times. So you come back up, you find this position where your pelvis facing the side, really wide in the front of the chest. Yes, moving back against the wall in is a very good idea. Tilting forwards. <laughs> yes, well done. And what? <laughs> Very well done. 
What I forgot to say on this side is maybe we just need to expect to wobble in this one. And I think if we expect to wobble, then any steadiness is a bonus <laughs> rather than expecting to be steady. <laughs> so, and that's one of the things that I've, I suppose <laughs> for me is helpful. Let's try the other side. So come back to feet being side to side and step the other foot forward. So just do a little bit of shifting your weight forward and back. That's it. Okay. And then as you settle down, you could notice that your, your feet are probably facing forwards. The back foot might have turned out a bit. And we're going to start to turn towards our back leg, swing our arms that way. And importantly, let the pelvis turn, unlike some of the other twists we've been doing. So as you do this, you might want to let your back foot turn out more. And sometimes at this point, I then step my front foot a little bit further forward. So these are all you know, little adjustments you can make just so that you can feel wide across the front of your pelvis and wide across the front of your chest, the arms up. We've got the, we're this big sort of sail, this big full moon, even though we're going into half moon. <laughs> and then we start to bring our weight onto our front foot. What's it like to start to tip forward? You don't have to go particularly far. Just, yeah, where do you want to go to? See if you can keep breathing. Good, very, very well done, very nice. Yes, do try a couple of times if you like. I thought it was quite interesting that time because I was sort of going less far than I normally would because I was worried about the air pod falling out. And I thought, oh, actually that felt quite nice. Good. Well done. Yes, it's very interesting, isn't it? How much is it the mind or the body that throws you out of balance? We're going to do one last forward bend, which is a wide forward bend when you come out of that. So if you turn to face the long edge of your mat and take your feet wide, yes, and you could do a less, yeah, see, see what works. Lynn. Lynn, if you were to sort of fold forward so your hands could go on the bed or something, that might be better for you, see. Um, so yeah, you're going to come into a wide forward bend. So feet parallel, sinking into your heels, folding forwards, and just seeing how it feels. So it might be that you just want to be quite quiet in this forward bend. It might be that you, want, you like to do a bit of sort of bending one knee, bending the other, shifting your weight from side to side. That's it. Good. You could be resting your wrists on your ankles. You could be holding your elbows, particularly if you're having a few quiet breaths. And then from here, so Lynn, you're just you're going to make your way down um, into kneeling or sitting. And if you're in a wide forward bend, you could walk your feet in so they're a little distance apart to so stay bent forwards. Walk your feet in, and then you could come down to the floor through one last. And then from your squat, you can either sit back onto your bottom or you can roll forwards onto your knees. So you're either going to come to sit um, kneeling or cross-legged or with your legs long. So we're just going to come back to our breathing again. So make, make yourselves comfortable for a few minutes. Won't be for that long. So if you like to have your back against the wall and your legs long, you could do that. Or you could sit in kneeling, yes, or cross-legged. is good. And we're gonna add in a slightly different focus this time to our breathing. So start by settling with the breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. 
so in and out. So perhaps for two or three cycles of breath. Breathing in, saying into yourself, breathing out, saying out to yourself. And feeling the breath flowing in, feeling the breath flowing out. And then breathing in, my breath grows deep. Breathing out, my breath goes slowly. So breathing in deep, breathing out slow. And just remember to stay relaxed with this. So you're not trying to force your breath to deepen. You're just giving yourself a bit of time so that the breath can travel deep within you. And as you exhale, you're just letting the breathing slow down. And again, there's this opportunity for the breath to leave completely. So let's just have maybe three or four more cycles of breath, breathing in deep, breathing out slow. So when you're ready, you're going to just come to dog pose and see how it feels to sort of take that quiet, deep and slow breathing into dog. So when you arrive in dog, any of the little movements you need to do to ease yourself out in dog. But then can you, yeah, what's it like to think about that breathing in my breath grows deep, breathing out my breath goes slowly. And it might not work in dog pose. Often in dog pose, I want to do a sort of yawny breath or open my mouth. So let's just, yeah, I suppose consider, <laughs> consider the breath deep and slow in dog. And whenever you've had enough dog, you can settle into child. And child pose come back to that sort of notion of softening, sinking, settling. Maybe just letting your breathing do what it wants. And some child pose, if you're happy in child, if you're enjoying being there and you want a few more breaths there, that's fine. From child pose, when you're ready, you're going to slither forwards onto your belly. And 
until when your belly settle down, maybe one hand on top of the other and your cheek or your forehead resting on top of your hand. And you could start by giving your pelvis a bit of a wiggle. So on your belly, wiggling your pelvis. You could also do the one where you bend your knees and take the soles of your feet to the ceiling. And then you start to tilt your feet from side to side. So see, yeah, see how that feels. Lynn, if your back doesn't like that one or if anyone else's back doesn't like it, don't do it. A little bit of tilting the feet from side to side on your belly. And then let your legs come down onto the floor. And for a few cycles of breath, gather your attention into your breathing. If you like, if it's helpful to come back to breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. You can do. Or if you prefer breathing in, my breath grows deep. Breathing out, my breath goes slowly. You can have another few breaths on your belly if you like. From your belly, you're going to be rolling over onto your back. Which, <laughs> so you can either keep your head where it is or put your head up the other end of your mat. And so it might be quite welcome because unless you were here early today, you haven't been lying on your mat, at least not very much. So let yourself arrive and yeah, lie however you like. Gather your attention into your breathing. We're going to do a bit of movement here and a bit more breathing. But just for these first few moments, yeah, whatever feels good for you, settling down, arriving on your back, letting your body find itself in line. Might be quite nice to start by letting your head roll a little bit to the right and to the left. So just that sort of easing of your head from side to side. Keeping very much within a comfortable range of movement. And from your head rolling from side to side, find a comfortable place to settle the back of your head on the ground. And if your legs are long, now bend your knees. Stand your feet on the floor and start to let your knees tilt to the right and to the left. That's nice. Yes, good time to put on socks. Uh, <laughs> Danny, warm enough. That's it. So let your knees tilt to the right and to the left a few more times. And then pause in the center. And you're going to keep your right knee bent and your right foot standing on the floor and lengthen your left leg out on the ground. Good. So the first thing I'd like you to do is just let your right knee tilt a little bit to the right and to the left and just see how that feels when we're doing it with just one leg. And this becomes a bit more of the feeling of the leg moving in the hip joint. There might be a little bit of the pelvis rocking on the floor too. A couple more times, just how does that feel? Because in a moment, I would like you to then settle your foot down and not let your knee tilt to the right and to the left, okay? So now you're going to start to press 
into that right foot and let the left right side of the pelvis come away from the floor and let your pelvis roll towards the left. That's it. And just pay attention to what your right knee is doing. So you don't want the right knee to tilt to the left. You want to send your right knee forwards over your right footprint. That's it. So press into your right foot. Let the right side of the pelvis come away from the floor. Let the pelvis tilt to the left. And repeat this a few times. And hopefully, Lynn, this is quite good for your, I hope it's quite good for your back. Yeah, good. And quite often what I like to do with this one is coordinate the pressing with my out breath and particularly at this point in a class or a practice. So as you exhale, that would be the point at which you press down into that right foot and the pelvis tilts to the left. And then maybe as you breathe in, that's when you stop pressing into your foot and let the right side of the pelvis come back to the ground. If you pause for a moment next time your pelvis comes back down onto the ground and then cross your arms over your chest with your right arm on top. That's it. So we're going to add the upper, yes, um, right arm on top. That's it. So that's it, Sarah. We're going to add the upper body in now. So now as you press into your right foot, also roll across your upper back. So you're rolling towards the back of your left shoulder. Rather than roll onto your fingertips, that's it. Sort of trail your right fingertips out on the floor to your left side, away from the left side of your body. And let your head roll to the left as well. So now the whole of our body is involved in this movement. It starts by that pressing into the right foot. So that's it, Sarah. Pressing into the right foot. You've got your right arms crossed over your chest with your right arm on top. You're pressing into the right foot. You're rolling across your upper back towards the back of the left shoulder. You're just feeling this sort of bit of a massage for the back of your body. That's nice. Good. Okay, you can do it once or twice more on this side and then let it go. Maybe lengthen both legs out, fold both knees in before we do the other side. So just give yourself a little mini, a little mini rest before we do all this on the second side. This is nice to let the body settle to feel a cycle or two or three of breath move through you. And then when you're ready, you'll settle yourself with your left knee bent your left foot standing on the floor and your right leg long. And so the first thing we did was letting the knee tilt to the right and to the left. That's it, good. And really this is just so when we start to press our foot, we're trying not to let our knee tilt. You get all your knee tilting in now. Okay, so when you're ready, settle that foot down now and start to press into that left foot and let the left side of the pelvis come away from the floor. Let the pelvis tilt to the right, but not the knee. So keep, think about sending your knee forwards over your footprint. So as you press into that left foot, your knee goes forwards over the footprint. The left side of your pelvis lifts, your pelvis tilts to the right. Good, very nice. And again, it might be helpful to coordinate the movement with your exhalation. Good. Very nice. Do this once or twice more just with pressing into the foot and then when you want to you can add the arms in so crossing the arms over your chest your left arm on top this time and so now this becomes much more of a whole body movement we're pressing into that left foot we're rolling across the upper back 
Our weight's coming onto the back of the right shoulder. Good. We're trailing those left fingertips out on the floor away from the right side of the body. The head's rolling to the light. Good. That's it. This is that. So a few more times. So once, twice more on this side. And then you might like to lengthen your legs out, both legs for a moment. Good. You might also like to, when you've lengthened your legs out, <laughs> fold your knees into your chest. A little bit of rolling. Both knees folded into your chest, a little bit of rolling from side to side across the back of your body. You could also do a little bit of taking your legs up to the ceiling and shaking them out. And then we're just going to come back to the breathing we've been doing to finish. So you're going to settle down, lying down. If you prefer to sit, that's fine, Jan, would you like a blanket? You're okay. So just to make sure you're going to be warm enough, you can lie or you can sit. Lying is, <laughs> lying is always a good choice. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, so make sure you're going to be warm enough and taking, you know, settling down. When you are settled, you can just start for a couple of cycles of breath. So breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. So just making that connection with the flow of your breath. And when you're ready, you can then move on to the deep, and slow. So breathing in, my breath grows deep. Breathing out, my breath goes slowly. So breathing in deep, breathing out slow. And using these words to help you just give yourself a bit of time time for the in-breath to fill you fully, time for the out-breath to empty you. So no, no feeling of forcing your breath to do anything other than it wants to do, but just giving it a little bit more time and space. And then for the last few cycles of breath, we have one further focus. Breathing in, I feel calm. Breathing out, I feel ease. So breathing in calm, breathing out ease. So see how it feels to settle with those suggestions just for the last minute or so. And then I will ring the singing bowl. Breathing in calm, breathing out ease.
Thank you. Thanks, Clara. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to, glad to see you for the whole class this time, Sarah. So <laughs> good. Good start. Lovely to see you all. So bye. Bye.